Welcome to Wager Talk TV, where users get $25 in Wager Bucks added to your account after your first purchase of either Wager Talk or SportsMemo.com. All right, guys, we already have a Pac 12 game, which is weird. Week two, this is interesting. Stanford, one and a half point dogs at the Trojans. Little story time. Stanford, I was having the worst college football opening week of my life. And I said, okay, all these guys in front of me bet Northwestern. These guys have been on every single square play all day. I was like, fine, I'm going to lay the points with Stanford. And all of a sudden, I haven't lost a game since. So I'm going to keep it rolling. I also bet against the Trojans. I had Fresno State on Saturday night. That was a nice win there. Now, USC's starting quarterback is going to be out for this game. I'm, I'm guessing the rest of the season. That being said, I don't know I like either side in this game. Mr. Marshall, to the right of me. Bruce A. Marshall on Twitter, Brian Leonard at B. Leonard Sports. Bruce, we'll start with you. Yeah, uh, Kelly, I think you can make a case here for Stanford. And by the way, this reminds me at USC a lot of what happened at Stanford back in 2006. I'm pretty plugged in up there. I do the Stanford pregame show on the radio. And I remember being up there when Walt Harris was still the head coach in 06, and they were having a lot of trouble. Late season game against Oregon State, Stanford scored a long touchdown in its first play of the game. And some Stanford people around me were mad. They're saying, no, 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 we cannot win this game. we got to get rid of this guy. Sure enough, Stanford ended up losing the game. They fired Walt Harris. And in comes Jim Harbaugh. And the rest is history from there. USC people are kind of thinking the same way, I think, right now about Clay Helton. They won that game last week. They didn't get the cover, like you said. But they know it's not going that well for the Trojans there. And especially now with JT Daniels out for the season with this knee injury. Listen, they built this offense right for him. They changed last year in the Notre Dame game, after the Notre Dame game, because Coach Helton thought that uh, Daniels was more comfortable throwing short, distributing the ball short, and he, a Texas Tech offense seemed to be what they should be implementing this year. This was all done for Daniels. It was not done for Keaton Slovis, the backup. So I think there's going to be an adjustment. Slovis looked a little bit shaky and nervous last week. SC doesn't return that kickoff for a touchdown. They may not win that game. Defense didn't look that good. Listen, Stanford will take it. Don't worry about the way they won the game. Those of us who had Stanford against UCLA, in 2016 and got a touchdown like that right at the end of the game to cover with Stanford. Those of us who had Northwestern, I guess it was kind of our comeuppance. It was our payback, so that happened. Uh, Costello, the quarterback for Stanford, should be in there. He got knocked out of the game last week, but his backup, Davis Mills, was a high school All-American. He's one of the top quarterbacks in the country a few years ago. They got the running game going a bit last week, too. I think Stanford comes down to the Coliseum and wins. All right, Brian. Uh, Stanford's left tackle is going to be out, and he's one of the guys that uh, is going to be playing on Sundays. That's a concern, and it's not, as far as I know, Costello, they haven't rolled him in. Right. They say they're going to wait till Friday. I'm assuming he's going to play. Um, Stanford's defense only allowed three and a half uh, yards per play last week against Northwestern. Very impressive. But, uh, you know, Kenny White, one of our colleagues here, I think he did videos with you a couple weeks ago. Uh, in his magazine, he had a drop-off uh, between Daniels and Slovis of four and a half points. Slovis actually was the fourth-string quarterback just a couple months ago. He's a three-star recruit. Now, how many times have we seen U U uh, excuse me, USC with a three-star recruit Never. behind center? Never <laughs> happens. So I'm concerned about that for USC, and uh, that's something that really concerns me here. Um, and it's not a look ahead, obviously, for Stanford, but they do play at Central Florida next week. Uh, that's a game I'm looking forward to seeing because Central plays an easy schedule, and now they get a team from a Power Five conference that's not a bad team. But uh, for this one right here, with, to me, it's just too many variables right now. We don't know who's playing, who's not. I will sit this one out. Bruce mentioned that uh, kickoff return by USC, and at that point in time, I'm sitting in the sports book, you know, holding on going, holy hell. That can't happen again, otherwise the cover's absolutely and utterly toast. That is my concern when betting against USC is they are so loaded with talent. Now, have we seen maybe too much regression from Daniels to the third, what did you call him, a three-star recruit? He is a three-star recruit. You know, is that, have we seen maybe the, the books know that people know these, these uh, injuries happened and then we saw them not cover last week. Stanford got the miracle. Maybe there's an over-adjustment. Well, there, there are still some playmakers on that SC team. Don't get us wrong. Like you saw Kelly in the kickoff return last week turn that game around or actually gave SC the cushion it needed to hold off uh, Fresno. But let's not forget, Clay Helton is now 8-20 and 20 against the point spread. Ooh. His last 28 on the board dating back to the Rose Bowl at the end of the 2016 season. He's been a big money burner. Stanford's 10-4 and four against the spread, the last 14 in this series. David Shaw has generally had SC's number. They lost those two games two years ago when Sam Darnold was at SC, but we know the Trojans aren't the same since Darnold left. 
Stanford was also running the ball last week fairly well against Northwestern, much better than it did last year, and that defense was lights out against Northwestern. I think Stanford's got a lot of reason to be excited about this game, and this is a huge game for Stanford. Don't ever forget that. That is very true. I just wanted to point out once again that USC is always in the top ten in recruitment. They've got great athletes that don't have great coaching. And that's the concern you have. The, the, I call or, them the Texas of the Pac-12. Pretty, pretty, well, Texas doesn't recruit nearly as well as USC does. They're top ten every single year. And if you're looking at uh, their team just based on the amount of talent they have, that tells you their coaching has been lousy. They just haven't gotten anything out of these players. All right, great stuff, guys. Wager Talk TV users get $25 in wager bucks added to your account after your first purchase at wagertalk.com and sportsmoment.com.